All right, everybody, and welcome to the March 21st edition. This is only number three in the series here of the COVID Chronicles, where we talk about then and now regarding the coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19, whatever you'd like to call it. So today is March 21st, 2021, and let's get into it. Do you feel like you've been going around in circles? Have you been locked down for an extended period of time? Well, this is the day that Pennsylvania got locked down as a result of COVID. And if you want to read more about COVID, head to our forum at smashamash.com slash forum. And if you head to page 13, you'll get to today's date. Today's date is March 21st. And an important letter came out last year on March 21st, one from Pat Brown to Pennsylvania residents. So without getting all in depth into that and reading the letter, I just wanted to no note that only a couple days prior to this, a small town in Northern Italy locked down because of the outbreak there. And everybody all over news and social media said, oh, a Western country requiring that they lock down because of a pandemic, it could never happen. It's impossible for that to have happened because, well, nobody would tolerate a lockdown in a Western nation. People did not expect it to happen in the UK or in the US. How did that work out? Anyway, here's a short tidbit from Senator Pat Brown to Pennsylvania residents. On Thursday evening, Governor Wolf, evil tyrant, ordered the closure of all non-life sustaining businesses in Pennsylvania. A list of business types that would be affected by this order is available at some Pennsylvania government site, and we won't go to that. But again, we've uh, global stickied this forum thread, coronavirus. It started on January 23rd of last year and it was updated nearly every day through July. So we've got just a list of all the different things that went on here, all of the utterly unconstitutional things that occurred. Also, on March 21st, 2020, we reported that IBM Supercomputer identifies 77 compounds that could fight coronavirus. Whatever happened to that story? whatever happened to the tests on those 77 compounds. Anyway, they ran simulations of over 8,000 compounds. And that was a story we, want, we wanted to show that day. Also, here's a story to help you avoid fake coronavirus news, according to Samantha Vanderslot of The Conversation. That's quite a name, Samantha Vanderslot. You know you want to say it aloud. The proliferation, here's a quote from the article, the proliferation of fake news about the COVID-19 pandemic has been labeled a dangerous, quote, infodemic, end quote. Fake news spreads faster and more easily today through the internet, social media, and instant messaging. Anyway, if you wanna read that, that's also copy pasted in its entirety. The article was from sciencealert.com. Here's another article on the 21st. Doctors say children vital to slowing COVID-19 pandemic. Here's how. This was uh, from a study by the University of Virginia Health System. I'll scroll the article and blow it up a little bigger here so you can just read it on the video. Here we go. Why would children be vital to slowing COVID-19 pandemic? It's because of a thing called herd immunity and children are not nearly at as high of a risk when it comes to COVID-19 as the elderly. So when the median age of death is 80, with a particular pandemic viral vector, it may not be appropriate to do certain things. And I'll just summarize that by saying the following. If the cure is worse than the disease, guess what you do with the cure? You don't administer it. All right, so I'll put this back on the screen here. And so without, re without releasing any medical misinformation, I'll just let 
the article scroll. And again, the reason that we copy pasted the entire articles is just in case anybody takes them down or scrubs them from the internet entirely, we've hosted them on our own servers. As when you see the writing on the wall, folks, you should certainly react to it as we prefer our viewers to have the correct information as opposed to a pile of BS and nonsense. So there, there's a reason why some of us were able to forecast 100% correct about everything we forecasted on regarding COVID-19 and other people flip-flopped over and over again. Another thing that we put up last year on March 21st was America's shopping list. Here's what we're buying the most. And I remember covering this one specifically. I'm going to let it scroll because it includes things like beans, bullets, and band-aids. Did I say that? Yes, I think I did. Also oat milk and soap and tissues, apparently. And so if you want to read more about what was going on last year at this time, go check out the smashomash.com slash forum. That's smashomash.com slash forum. You'll find all of this stuff and a lot more, including cosmology forums, Earth and, Earth and geophysics forums. Heliophysics has its own forum thread. Unparalleled challenge inside America's first lockdown major city. Everything is out of control. Uh-oh. As New York turned into the deadliest place in the world, largely because of Andrew Cuomo's nursing home policies, although Andrew Cuomo would not face any sort of accountability for that until he got accused of diddling staff. So regardless of the situation there, let's just put a pin in that. We'll probably bring that one up at a later time. This one is about California anyway. And a major announcement regarding California's handling of things. Who remembers when certain politicians were telling people to go to Chinatown and so on? It's racist to not want to go eat out, folks, until lockdowns occur. Then it's very important. So I won't go any more in depth into that. I'll just continue on scrolling down here at smashamash.com slash forum. We must have put up quite a few articles on the 21st last year. And some days we'll see a lot more coverage than others. We wanted to create a timeline here so that nobody was able to gaslight you and attempt to get you to believe total fraud, nonsense, and lies about what was going on last year at this time. Noticing the streets completely empty was a horrifying thing. And San Francisco was one of the first lockdown cities, apparently. Quote, what does a typical day in the Bay Area look like right now? From a ghost town in Jack London Square to an empty movie theater in San Francisco, here's what we found in different cities. How are you passing the time? So we're just going to scroll down here and we're going to show you these empty spots, which are among the busiest spots undoubtedly in these areas. Downtown San Francisco, devoid of people in some of the busiest areas. And there's Chicago, otherwise known as Chicago. There's an empty plane and a guy looking frightened. There's the empty concourse. More San Francisco imagery, perhaps a downhill skate spot. And I've lost control of my browser. Dear Brave Browser, please vest control back into me, the owner of this PC. Continuing on. So leave us a comment and let us know what's going on in your location or what you were thinking around that time. Check it out. Here's another article, the International Journal of Antimicrobial Agents. Apparently, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine as available weapons to fight COVID-19, a nearly 60, I think over 60 year old medication. And without saying anything else about that, a rather lengthy article about this as well. Let me scroll down here through this complicated article. And we've moved on to the next day. So page 13 and 14 at smashamash.com slash forum is where you want to go for that. And let's go to an article from today. 
And this article from today is from SciTech Daily. This is the graphic that we used. It's some microscopy of actual SARS-CoV-2 viruses. And I present this image to all of you folks who claim viruses are fake. There are things that are real that are not visible to the human eye, folks. Novel coronavirus circulated undetected for months before COVID-19 cases dis- before, excuse me, before COVID-19 cases discovered in Wuhan, China. Let's repeat that again from the SciTech Daily article, quote, and this is the headline, novel coronavirus circulated undetected for months before first COVID-19 cases discovered in Wuhan, China. And I'll let the article scroll here real quick. Without further comment there. Next, we're going to look at some current news stories just to see what is in the newswire for the day. So let's check out, I don't know, let's check out USA Today. How about, there we go. And more headlines about Asian hate. Please stop the hate period, but certainly all forms. And uh, just so you know, even if you blame the Chinese Communist Party for intentionally circulating coronavirus, I don't really care. That's got nothing to do with the average person who is probably not your enemy. So it's a ridiculous idea that people from Southeast Asia are somehow responsible for the pandemic. It's absolutely ridiculous. What else do we have? And check it out, folks. I've found a feel-good article here. After battling COVID for a year, the first day of spring brings hope to many. And we hope it brought hope to you. We hope the channel brings hope to you as well, as you may find a lot of nonsensical BS on YouTube. By the way, this one is a YouTube exclusive. And if you're viewing our videos only on YouTube, you may want to check out our alt tech sources, such as bitshoot.com slash smashamash. Maybe check out the most popular video on our Bitshoot channel. Some people feeling like they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And again, I would ask you, do you feel like you're going around in circles? Like you'll be wearing masks forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. When will it end? I guess it will end when certain health officials tell us it will end because reasons. So let's head to another website here. Another news distillery, Zero Hedge. Former FDA commissioner, quote, costly, and quote, social distancing mandate wasn't based on clear science. Hmm. Could it have something to do with Dr. Fauci committing fraud? How many masks is Dr. Fauci wearing in that photo? I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven. I guess that's a lucky number of masks to wear. Who knew? Whatever you do, folks, make sure you listen to whatever St. Fauci says, no matter how ridiculous it sounds and no matter how much he refutes himself. So former FDA commissioner says costly social distancing mandate wasn't based on clear science. I don't know. Geez, uh, Scott, Dr. Scott Gottlieb dared to speak optimistically about the way forward. Quote, we now know that vaccines dramatically reduce your chance of both contracting COVID and becoming symptomatic to the point where you are going to have a bad outcome. We also know it reduces asymptomatic disease and reduces transmission. We are seeing that in the data. The Pfizer board member does hedge a little by suggesting those who are at high risk still take precautions. Quote, people can be more liberal. People will be taking off their masks because we are going to see prevalence decline around the country and people who've been vaccinated can go out with more confidence. So there's some more good news from us, unless you would like the pandemic to continue, perhaps because you've got a lot of Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Moderna stock in your portfolio. The six foot distancing requirement has probably been the single costliest mitigation tactic otherwise known as non-pharmaceutical intervention that we've employed in response to COVID, says Scott Gottlieb. Let's play a clip. The six foot distancing requirement has probably been the single costliest uh, mitigation tactic that we've uh, employed in, as a result of COVID in response to COVID. So leave us a comment and let us know what you think of non-pharmaceutical interventions as a means by which to control a virus. 
as we are interested to know what you, the viewer, thinks about such things. So let us know about that in the comments section. And we're just going to scroll down to the bottom of Zero Hedge's news feed here and scroll back up to the top. So don't worry, folks. What I'm going to show you now is not going to have Dr. Fauci's face on the screen. You can not worry about your rage. Hate crimes. Taliban warns of reaction if U.S. stays in Afghanistan. Gross profits for house flippers hit record as Fed turbocharges real estate bubble. It's called cheap money, folks. The great donkification. I know what that's about. I won't even mention it. If Bitcoin didn't exist, we'd have to invent it right now. Okay. Do you own any stellar lumens, folks? I ask you, do you own stellar lumens? Let's, let's break into the world of finance for a quick moment. Since we've included finance in our coverage of last year's point in the, in the pandemic. So here's a chart. The quote from Bitcoin at Coinbase, currently at $57,105.50 per Bitcoin. And how about if I show you the one month chart? There's the one month chart there, pretty flat in the past three weeks. Here's the one year chart looking very bubble like. Next, I'm going to show you the fourth most held cryptocurrency on Coinbase, Stellar Lumens. So Stellar Lumens here, it's covered by Coinmetrics, just over 40 cents per Stellar Lumen. Now Stellar Lumens is involved in, the, in transaction networks, trying to make transactions faster and less expensive. It's also recently broken into the Southeast Asia market, and I'll just leave that there. Put a pin in that one, folks. We'll cover that at a later time. And that's all I'm going to cover regarding financial stuff. Let's move back to news stories. And how about this one from the Economic Collapse blog? America's upside down economy just took another bizarre turn. What might that be? More than 100,000 businesses have permanently shut down. Approximately 10 million Americans are in danger of being evicted from their homes. What could possibly go wrong, folks? What about non-fungible tokens are one of the latest crazes. You can't hang non-fungible tokens on your wall, but that isn't stopping people from paying ridiculous amounts of money for it. In fact, things have gotten so crazy, one film director has decided to sell audio clips of himself farting as non-fungible tokens. A Brooklyn-based film director is simultaneously mocking and attempting to profit off the cryptocurrency craze for non-fungible tokens by selling a year's worth of fart audio clips recorded in quarantine. If people are selling digital audio, art, and GIFs, why not sell farts? Alex Ramirez Malice 36 told post told the post of his dank addition to the blockchain based non fungible token market. We linked to that one from Zero Hedge also. Maybe the second least busted name in news after the Smash News Network. So we're gonna show you some more articles here. We're gonna go to one other news source. We'll go to uh, we'll go to NBCnews.com. Millennials apparently partially responsible for the dramatic surge in cord cutting. If you don't know what cord cutting is, it means when you go off of cable. If you stop watching cable, cord cutting does not include the internet, I believe. And I'll just show you the list of stories that I'm scrolling up here in case you're interested in any of these. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about whatever. We do read all comments and we're more than happy to see our friends and foes leave comments on the channel. Cheers. Cheers to our friends and foes, as well as our neutrals. If you move to these cities, the American dream is still achievable. The illegal immigration crisis is all about the new COVID lockdowns. Is it? What about the ECB's financial today? I don't even know what that is. Does that mean suicide? I have no idea. Top NATO scientist with high-level security clearance spied for Chinese intelligence. Were you surprised? The Syrian Arab army in the war is the world's most... Watch me learn how to speak English. The Syrian Arab army in the world's most volatile game of whack-a-mole. How about the biggest public holders of Bitcoin? 
Would you like to know who are the biggest public holders of Bitcoin? I would. Well, there are the charts of the U.S. dollar versus gold, Bitcoin, and, and fiat, that is, other fiat currencies. Let me shrink it down so we can show the whole chart here. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola Square, MicroStrategy, Mass Mutual, Tesla. Everybody knows about Tesla. Invested $1.5 billion in Bitcoin reserves. MasterCard announced support. Here are the large institutional Bitcoin holder positions. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, MicroStrategy, CoinShares, XBT Provider, Ruffer, Tesla, Galaxy Digital Holdings, Mass Mutual, Marathon Patent Group, and Square are large holders of Bitcoin. And let's close things out with the homepage of NBCNews.com. Now, I know our viewers all love NBCNews.com, so let me make sure that I allow you to see me press refresh. You'll see this as soon as I do. And the top headline is he helped spark a revolution when he was a boy. Now he wonders if it was worth it. Looks like it was in Iraq. And let's check out what this story is about. It is the top headline. Oh, must be Syria. All right. His arrest helped trigger the uprising against Bashar al-Assad. But 10 years on, Bashir Abazaid wonders whether the revolt was worth it. Since he sacrificed everything, it probably wasn't if he really means everything. But he is still alive, so he probably didn't sacrifice everything. Now, did he? All right, so there is a header specifically for COVID-19. Let's see the biggest headline. What happened with the, coval with the covalescent plasma for COVID? Don't count it out yet, some say. So another silver lining here today. And that's where we'll close things out. Thanks to NBC News for putting a feel-good story about COVID. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash mash here at this new special series, The COVID Chronicles, a feature of the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. We'll see you next time. This has been COVID Chronicles, then and now, March 31st, 2021. Lockdown in Pennsylvania, the one-year anniversary to when Pennsylvania's lockdown began. <laughs>